Sevgili seyirciler, aramızda müzik var ile yeniden birlikteyiz. Bakü'deyiz ve burada bulunmamızın nedeni konuğum Emin. Hazar Denizi kıyısında bir liman şehri. Baka, Baku, Baku ve Bakuye veya Farsça Batkube yani rüzgarın dövdüğü yer. Ne zaman kurulduğu bilinmiyor ama kalıntılar 5. yüzyılda yaşam izleri olduğunu gösteriyor. Adına ise ilk defa 10. yüzyıl İslam coğrafyacılarının eserlerinde rastlanıyor. Bilinen tarihine bakarsak 12. yüzyılda Şirvan Şahların yaşadığı Bakü, sonraki yüzyıllarda önce Moğolların, sonra yeniden Şirvan Şahların, ardından Safevilerin hakimiyetine girer. 1583 yılında Özdemiroğlu Osman Paşa şehri fethedip Osmanlı İmparatorluğuna bağlasa da Safeviler geri alır. Ardından Ruslar, İranlılar, tekrar Ruslar ve İngilizler şehre hakim olur. 1918'de kurulan Milli Azerbaycan Hükümeti'nin ve 2 yıl sonra Sovyetler Birliği'ne bağlı olarak yerine kurulan Azerbaycan Sovyet Sosyalist Cumhuriyeti'nin başkentliğini yapar. 1991 ise bağımsızlık yılıdır. Yüzyıllarca süren hakimiyet savaşları petrol kaynağının zenginliğinden olsa da Bakü aynı zamanda önemli bir kültür merkezidir. Bugün de tiyatroları, opera, bale kuruluşları, 150'den fazla kütüphanesi, 16 müzesi ve sanat galerileriyle zengin kültürünü gelecek nesillere taşıyor. Müze merkezindeyiz. Bu binada 3 müze var. Biri bizi yakinen ilgilendiriyor. Azerbaycan Musiki Medeniyeti Devlet Müzesi. 1967 yılında kurulan Azerbaycan Devlet Müzik ve Kültür Müzesi'nin temel amacı Azerbaycan müzik tarihiyle ilgili materyallerin toplanması ve tanıtılması. Müzenin fonunda 56 binden fazla eser bulunuyor. Bunlar arasında Azerbaycan'ın milli müzik aletleri, tar, kemençe, saz, def, goşanara, zurna, ney ve asatar, asasaz gibi kendine has özelliklere sahip diğer müzik aletleri ve ayrıca gramofonlar yer alıyor. Azerbaycan Profesyonel Müzik Sanatı'nın kurucusu Üzeyir Hacı Bayov'un, Milli Profesyonel Vokal Sanatı'nın öncüsü Bülbül'ün, önemli besteciler Gara Garayev ve Fikrat Amirov'un el yazmaları, kişisel eşyaları, posterleri, fotoğrafları ile güzel sanatlardan örnekler, notlar, kitaplar ve diğer müzik figürleri de müzede sergilenmektedir. Müzenin 2015 yılından beri bulunduğu, halk çalgılarının kalıcı sergisinin yer aldığı ve bizim şu an gezdiğimiz bina dışında şubeleri de var. Niyazi'nin, Vagif Mustafa Zade'nin ve Gara Garaev'in evleri de müzeleştirilerek bünyeye dahil edilmiş.
Bakü'nün en keyifli, en ödüllü salonuna, Bakü Kongres Merkezi'ne geldik. Gelin birlikte gezelim. I'm very happy to be here. Thank It's a you. beautiful architecture. Thank you. Can you tell us the story of this For convention sure. center? For sure, with a great pleasure. So the Baku Convention Center was designed by the worldwide known uh, Austrian architectural mm -hmm. bureau called Kup Himmelblau mm -hmm. with uh, its mm, very well-known architect Wolf Briggs. The building, uh, construction of the building has started in 2013 and ended It's been on... It's 10 years, not so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and ended on uh, April 29th, mm. 2015. Mm. Yeah, It's so... Two years is good. Yeah, quite uh, quickly, yeah, let's quickly. say. <laughs> yeah. So the first event also took uh, place here on 2015. Actually, this is the... Uh, the best, actually, uh, mm -hmm. venue right now mm -hmm. in our country and in the region, Caucasus region, because mm -hmm. this is a very multifunctional venue. Mm -hmm. We have not only the main auditorium hall, that mm -hmm. is also very specific. It has the special rotating seats oh. system, so-called gala system. That's beautiful. Yeah, and this system uh gives us the opportunity of changing the setup of the venue you can yeah. switch from the amphitheater to the banquet to the stage yeah yeah yeah so you can uh, host different kind of events whatever setup you like and as well we have 15 conference halls as well so uh, other people yeah, yeah yeah they are surrounding the main auditorium they hall. They, uh, they start from 50 till 500 to packs. Yeah, you can mix them. They have by folding walls. Uh, so you can take off the walls and mix the rooms between them. So you can host a much bigger, people, yeah, <laughs> much bigger number of guests. It, in total, they host up to 2,500 packs. Uh, in a year, how many events uh, you, you can realize in this place? Approximately 50, 60 events, but this year we hit the record and we hosted 100 events. I mean, there is congress and con concerts and uh, you know, recitals, that kind of things. Have yeah, we have quite a uh, mixture of events. Mm -hmm. We host uh, the summits, the international conferences, mm -hmm. the congresses, as well as concerts, theaters, and mm, many more entertaining uh, events as well. Mm -hmm. So we've hosted a big uh, number of uh, concerts of a world-known artists such mm -hmm. as Gypsy Kings, yeah, yeah Tom Odell, Peter Benz, Peter Richard Benz. Kleiderman, Richard and Kleiderman. many more. How many people, uh, the, the, the big audience? The main auditorium the hall, main auditorium, yeah. uh, it hosts uh, 3,500 packs. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It, is it full all the time? Yeah. That's good. Yes. <laughs> Azerbaycan Ulusal Sanat Müzesi, eski çağlardan günümüze kadar taşınan milli ve evrensel, maddi ve manevi kültür mirasını koruyan ve bu eşsiz sanat incilerini nesilden nesile aktaran değerli bir kültür hazinesi. Müze, 1936 yılında Azerbaycan Devlet Müzesi olarak faaliyete geçmiş. 2011 yılında müze, devlet kararıyla ulusal statüsü almış. Aynı yıl, Brüksel'de bulunan Avrupa müze standardı statüsünü de elde etmiş. Azerbaycan'ın önde gelen kültür merkezlerinden biri olan ve zengin koleksiyonunda 18 binden fazla eser yer alan Azerbaycan Ulusal Sanat Müzesi, ulusal dekoratif ve uygulamalı sanat örneklerinin yanı sıra batı ve doğu sanatının çeşitli dönemlerini de içeriyor. Böylelikle ülkenin asırlardır süren kültürel ilişkilerini de anlatmış oluyor. Azerbaycan Milli Sanat Müzesi, koleksiyonunun değeri ve zenginliği bakımından dünyanın saygın müzelerinden biri. Bünyesinde Türk, İran, Fransız, Japon, Çin, Orta Asya sanatına yönelik uluslararası sergiler, bilimsel dersler, geziler, aile, çocuk ve gençlik programları 
ustalık sınıfları ve yuvarlak masa toplantıları da düzenleniyor. I'm very happy to be here. I'm happy to Amy, have you here. You know, and to meet welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure. Yeah, and to, to sing and to play with you. I mean, it's fantastic. It's a pleasure. You're a great musician. <laughs> <laughs> and this place is beautiful. Thank and you. Also, this area is beautiful. Yes, thank you. It's, uh, it's gonna, where I grew up. Uh, my parents had a little dacha, a country yeah. house here on the Caspian Sea, in a place called Nardaran. Oh. And it was just dachas. Oh. And over the years, I decided to try and turn it into a proper resort. And it has been my lifetime project. I've been doing it for 17 years. It, was, it will be a really exceptional resort, really. I hope so. Let's talk about your childhood. Uh, well, uh, e excellent. Uh, to, uh, in short, uh, there are two children in my family initially. Me and my sister. My sister is eight years younger. I grew up here on the shore every summer. Although I studied abroad in uh, Russia, in Switzerland, in America, my parents used to send me here for the summer. And all my relatives, sisters, cousins, brothers, everybody was in this area. That's why I know this area so well. Mm. So we grew up uh, doing everything that uh, regular kids do, use the Caspian Sea uh, to swim, uh, to cook some kebabs uh, in the evening, <laughs> uh, to build little tents, uh, to hide from the sun, uh, to go early in the morning fishing or catching shrimp with a net. Wow. It's and a beautiful. I mean, it's it's it's the best beautiful. childhood you could have because it wasn't in the city. It was uh, mm -hmm. out on the shore in a very fun area. So it was a beautiful child childhood here uh, on the Caspian Sea on the shores of uh, Baku. And you can see. This is beautiful. Who discovered your music talent 
I think I discovered it myself somehow. I can't call it exactly talent. I think it was more work than talent uh, because I had a great inspiration for Elvis Presley. Completely fell in love with his music. Started to learn a little bit guitar and piano just to understand how to play and sing those songs. What age? 11, 12, 13, 11, 12. 15 maybe. And uh, eventually I started translating Elvis songs into Russian language. Uh, and that taught me a little bit uh, the writing process. So I started writing my own songs because I figured out how, how it's done. <laughs> how do you do the chords? How do you lay the lyrics? <laughs> and I uh, became a singer-songwriter. And my first album was released quite late, although my first album I recorded when I was 18. Then later I went into finance studying and then joined my family business in Moscow with my father. I dropped the music industry completely. Mm. And my first album was released in 2006 only. So mm. I was already a grown man, 25 years old, 26 years old. And I said, if I don't do it now, I will never do yeah, it. Yeah, you're and right. I, need, I need to do it. And <laughs> I, I just went, went through with it. And my first album was called Still. And the song on the album became my most uh, known songs, I think, uh, to this day and brought me some musical success. And over the past uh, you know, 20 years, almost 20 years, I've released maybe 15 albums. My latest album has been produced uh, by David Foster, who is an absolute legend. I always wanted to record an Elvis album. Mm -hmm. And David, who I shared a stage with uh, in St. Petersburg for PBS Public Television for the United States, which broadcasted a beautiful concert with the Palace of St. Pete uh, on, the, on the backdrop. Uh, we became friends, and I asked him many times, please produce my album. He said, mm -hmm. no, I'm not producing anymore. I'm tired of this. I've done it all my life. Barbara Streisand, Celine Dion, Michael Bublé, and uh, Whitney Michael Houston. Michael Bublé? Michael Bublé. Oh, yeah. He discovered Michael Bublé. Oh, that's great. And, uh, He's a good singer. Amazing singer. Yeah. And works in our area uh, with uh, all the Sinatras and Tony yeah, Bennett yeah, yeah. and Elvis and Tom Jones and Humperdinck. And um, the best music years you Be know. best years for sure i totally agree finally he agreed he said i'll do it we just recorded it and next first single coming in the end of this year and the album is coming next year with some amazing songs like can't help falling in love that we did with you today mm -hmm. uh, unchained melody and, and i love you so and some of elvis's biggest hits how was your musical journey uh, well initially my first four albums as i remember were english albums english. i recorded all my music in english but i was at that time based in moscow and some of my friends fellow artists always suggested listen you need uh, russian songs because mm. without russian yeah. songs people don't understand yeah. you because you're living in russia and your concerts yeah. are in russia eventually i recorded uh, a couple of songs in russian and they became big hits and since then i realized that my career should uh, be cut in two and you musical good, career, man. Russian music and English music, yeah. and uh, some some of the audiences mixes, and uh, I think it's great. No Russian audience, I, I, I, they are pleased to hear that, you know. And now in my concerts, you know, half I do in English, half in Russian, but I mix. And some of my songs that I released in English, I translated, it, mm -hmm. uh, wrote lush, Russian lyrics for mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. and people now realize that when they come to see me live, I will mix uh, both languages, and it's cool. Do you have a studio, something? Yes, I have a studio at home that I recently mm -hmm. built. Uh, but we use it, you know, studios, you don't have the big boards anymore with yeah, all the yeah, windows. It's, finished. it's, it's, it's a, all a good computer yes, it's, and it's on uh, cart. That's, that's okay. all you need. And uh, <laughs> I, I did it because I'm quite busy with all the developments yeah, and construction yeah, yeah, and travel yeah, yeah, and four yeah, children yeah. and And now the, the time has changed, you know. If you need a good guitarist from the other side of the ocean. He can record ocean, on his own. You just, yeah, he can send it. And that's what I do. <laughs> and uh, the reason I have it at home is because uh, in the morning before I go to work, I get a chance with my sound guy to record some vocals. Yeah. If I need to, yes, okay. so it's easy. It's a little booth. Uh, what was the breaking point of your career? Well, there were, I think, two breaking points. One is when I released uh, my first album uh, in 2006, uh, 17 years ago, uh, which uh, caught some momentum and success, uh, which I'm grateful because if that hasn't happened, I probably would have dropped the music industry as it is. And the second time is when I recorded my first uh, Russian song, which became a hit. Mm -hmm. That was in maybe 2013, 14, so 10 years ago. I think my audience over the years expanded all over the world, and uh, you know I have uh, a lot of concerts and tours. I go, I tour in the United States and Europe. Uh, we come to Turkey, so next time I'm there, please join mm -hmm. me. Uh, but most of the concerts, of course, are in the Russian region and post-Soviet region, so Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, uh, mm -hmm. all of Russia. Mm -hmm. So we go on big tours. We have a tour this month, about 10 shows. It we're still yet to do. So that's why we have the rehearsals. Uh, the, yeah, the, <laughs> when it start? We start in a week. Ah, uh, that's good. And how long is the tour? About 10 cities. 
That's good, man. It's not too bad. Then a little relaxed, and then another ten. Exactly. <laughs> That's good. What was your unforgettable concert? I try to upgrade my show every year. Uh, my musical MD from London, who comes and works with my band, and I put new songs in the set. I think my most uh, recent show here at Seabreeze in Baku, which I do every year, it was the biggest one and uh, one of the coolest, because I also had a very special guest, Engelbert Humperdinck, who joined me on stage and sang a oh, song, yeah. and I recorded a duet with him. And in this room, we filmed a video with him, which you'll be able to see shortly. Take the ribbon from your head Shake it loose and let it fall Lay it soft upon my skin Like the shadows on the wall Come and lay down by my side Till the early morning light All I'm taking is your time Help me make it through the night I don't care what's right or wrong I will try to understand Let the devil take tomorrow Lord, tonight I need a friend Yesterday is dead and gone Yesterday is dead Tomorrow's out of sight And tomorrow's out of sight And it's sad to be alone Help me make it through the night It was unforgettable. I really enjoy live performances because I think it's the only time where your music, uh, when you can actually get the I instant feedback from the people that like your music. Because they sing the songs together with you, they know the songs, they it's love the songs. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's live performances, there's nothing they can compare. Them. To hear your songs, he singing with everyone, you know, yeah, it's in front of you is fantastic. It's incredible. You are also a businessman. Managing music and business life. Is it easy? Well, since show business is also a business, uh, and I have a, f a financial degree in mm. uh, business management, uh, banking, mm. I quite understand how any industry works, because if you know the numbers, you can yeah. basically figure it out. And I'm in the development business, in the restaurant business, in the fitness business, so and in show business, because I do have a musical label, which I've recently sold, but I had it. I have a musical channel in Russia broadcasting a radio station, uh, produce some young artists. So mm -hmm. it is uh, both creative and business, and I just mix the two. You have a special team for uh, to arrange team, everything, isn't it? Big team. Big team. A few thousand How people. many persons you take? Well, at least uh, probably six, I'm seven thousand. Seven thousand? <laughs> That's a lot of people. <laughs> How you can describe your music? I think you can call it contemporary ballads uh, because I like slow songs. You know, my band always says, can you write something quick so people can dance? When I sit down on a piano, I always write something slow. <laughs> How do you compose and write lyrics? So, sometimes some, some of the songs I've written on my own, music and lyrics. Hmm. Some of the songs I participate in writing camps when some talented musicians and songwriters sit together with me in the room and we write music and lyrics together. Which one you prefer? First lyric, then write music on it? or be an or music and write lyrics on I it. I think uh, the best songs turned out when it comes simultaneously. When you have a melody in your head and you start laying it down and singing along random lyrics. This is the best, eh? When they blend perfectly. When you write the music and then put the lyrics to them, sometimes they sound a little bit artificial. It's because m music, uh, in order for it to be real and if you want to touch people's hearts, yeah. it has to come from your heart. Yeah. And when you think about it too much, it doesn't come from the heart. Yeah. It comes from the mind. <laughs> yeah. So the best songs are written very quickly. When you, you sit down, yeah. when you're the mood yeah. and when you sit and write and write and write usually these songs end up in your desk <laughs> you're never recorded <laughs> what do you think about Turkish audience I love Turkish audience I've uh, done a lot of shows especially in the 
uh, resort region in Bodrum, and mm. uh, I haven't had yet uh, a show in Istanbul, which uh, I think uh, time has come yeah. where I should uh, definitely do it. The Turkish uh, audience, I think, is uh, very special because I'm from Azerbaijan, and I think Turkish people and Azeri people, they love it's one, it's, it's one we, nation. We love each other, it's <laughs> true, that's all. <laughs> and we find a common ground right away. Yeah. And I have a lot of Turkish partners and friends, and some of them work with me, and uh, I'd really like to come to Istanbul and do a show. Who are your musician idols? Well, it's definitely Elvis Presley, yeah. Muslim Magamayev, who is one of the best, the best Soviet artists uh, of the 60s and 70s and the 80s. Ah, yeah. He is uh, our version of Frank Sinatra or Elvis or Mario Lanza with a bit of opera background. Uh, Andreano Celentano I like very much, a famous Italian singer. Uh, obviously my friend Engelbert Humperdinck, Tom Jones, uh, Tony Bennett, I like Sinatra. The best singer yes. of the world, yeah, man. Of yeah. course. Barry White, Shade. Yeah. And also you sing with uh, Alessandro Safina. Safina, Safina, yeah, another it, I, Italian. I, I watch person. it, don't He's great. It's, Alessandro it's is a great, beautiful voice. He's also my friend, yeah. Also, is it your song? It's it's Muslim Magamayev's song. We covered, ah. he translated it to Italian, and ah. I sing in Russian. So it's a it tribute. It was fantastic. It's a tribute song. Both, both, both, yeah, your performance together was unbelievable. Thank you. It's a, And out of the fresh singers, I really like Jack Savaretti, who is now ah, up and coming, yeah. very popular now, very good guy, uh, very talented. But they're made, they're, they're, they're all the Sting and Andrea Bocelli. I like all kinds of music, but I uh, learned that uh, mostly I like older music because I think it had more soul, more uh, more tr truthness to that. <laughs> uh, but I guess I'm older and I'm allowed to like older music. You are young. You are young, come on. But so, I love the old song. It's something very important. Yes. Because I it's musical that heritage. Those days, they, they create unbelievably beautiful songs. Uh, I agree with you completely. With and the lyrics and, and everything, yeah. It wasn't an industry back then, it was yeah. real music. Now and it's, it's a culture, industry. man. Yeah, it's a culture. You have to have this culture. For sure. Uh, I say to the young uh, generation, you have to finish Beatles University. 
because Beatles is an exceptional uh, group that show to everyone how to compose song and with easy lyrics and they easy to memorize. E yeah, melodies. easy melody. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, all their songs. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, Elvis Presley also is like that. Elvis was fantastic. Elvis is the best. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Yeah, he's the best. <laughs> but there is few people now you know, who knows Elvis. Yeah. Well, it's he, very good that you, uh, I mean, do, do a, a special project about that. You yes. Know? Well, I, I, I really think this music is unforgettable. Some people forget about maybe Elvis or forget the songs, but when they hear Fallen in Love, yeah. with, everybody knows, right? Everybody knows. Let's talk about your new plans and project. Well, in terms of musical plans, big album the coming next year of Elvis, uh, produced by David Foster, as I mentioned. And I'm going to uh, twist my live show to have more Elvis songs in the show, mm -hmm. but in new arrangements and mm -hmm. new, mm -hmm. uh, new vision. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, Baku, Seabreeze is my biggest project. It's a lifetime project. I've been doing it for 17 years. So more hotels coming here, more international brands, more restaurants, more residencies. So I think this will be a very, very interesting, beautiful resort for anybody in the world to visit. Because as I travel the world myself, I've been to Brazil, Australia, United States, all of Europe. I, whatever I, I see, which is amazing, including Turkey and Bodrum and Yalakavak Marina, I want to implement a version of it here uh, at my home in Baku yeah. and Sibiris. And I think I'm on the right path. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Do you have any regrets? I don't think I have ma any major regrets. I'm, I've been very blessed because I have four children, two boys, two girls, two wives. Uh, first wife, now second wife. Uh, my parents are alive, uh, my mom and dad. Although my mom lives in America, my dad lives in uh, uh, Moscow. I have a lot of friends, a lot of relatives, a lot of people work with me, which I admire and like and enjoy. So I really have a perfect life. And I'm very, <laughs> you don't have any regrets. I'm, I'm grateful to, uh, <laughs> to the guy above that he has been helping me out all my years. One regret maybe can be I have to start music younger. True. Well, may, may, maybe get a musical education as well, not yeah. just business and finance and money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How is your relation with other art branch? I'm not a big uh, theater fan, but I'm a huge movie fan. So I watch all the movies, old, new, I rewatch movies, you know, all the legendary movies. And I really think there's a special place for music uh, in the movies. And over yes. the years, uh, there, yeah. there's some songs that became so big because the music, the movie was so great, you know, like Love Story that mm. was performed by Andy Williams, you know. Where do I begin to tell yeah, the story yeah, yes. of how great a love can be? Uh, some of the contemporary music is uh, becoming very popular in movies and artists that come out of, of this become big artists eventually. So I think music and movies go in line. So I'm a big fan. I uh, produced a couple of movies in my life as well, so I know a little bit about the movie industry. Uh, but my main uh, focus is on music, oh, yeah. oh, and I think, you know, in my lifetime, let's stick with one job. <laughs> I remember I watched a film uh, from uh, Jean-Paul Belmondo, Anouk Aimé. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing There is no music at the, in the film at the end. There is a beautiful uh, scene. Uh, the ladies get down from the plane and uh, Jean-Paul Mendo is getting down. There is no music. You feel nothing. Then, five minutes after, they put the music on it. On the indie film. Uh -huh. It was so exciting. Man. Well, those composers, Ennio Morricone and... Uh, Morricone. Yes, these are also legends that has, yeah, yeah. have written songs for the movies that I think you don't know which, what is better, the music or the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes this happens, yeah. yeah. How do you chill out? Do you have any hobbies? Well, plenty. Sports. Uh, I like Sports. Uh, tennis, paddle, boxing. Uh, uh, boxing? Yeah. Wow. Ten years boxing for me. <laughs> Not anymore. Like a sport. Okay. Like a sport. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy my friends. I enjoy my children. My boys have grown. They're now 14 years old, so we can really spend some quality time together. We're not, they're not little babies anymore. They're you know, grown men. So I, I'm really you know, happy that uh, every day uh, is something fun happening in my life. Every day. A lot of work. A lot of work. Some fun in the end of the day. Do you keep time for yourself also? Uh, usually not. I hate to be on my own. I'm always surrounded by people, friends, children, uh, relatives. Uh, I'm always with people. I'm a people's man. That's great, man. It's been a Thank pleasure. Thank you very much for Thank for you for coming to man. Baku and visiting uh, Seabreeze, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, see you in Istanbul. Istanbul, then. Yes. Thank you. Wise men say 
Only fools rush in But I can't help falling in love with Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Sevgili seyirciler, bir bölümümüzün daha sonuna geldik. Bakü'deydik, Emin ile birlikteydik. Aramızda müzik vardı. Sizin de aranızda sınırlar değil, sevgi, hoşgörü, müzik ve sanat olsun. Hoşçakalın. <gülüyor>